All right, so this is going to be a very quick video showing you guys how to load your bootloader using an Arduino Uno onto your stock CR10 board. Now, I have the board removed from your printer, from the printer. Um, these are spare boards I use for testing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys what you have to do to actually get the software onto the printer if you have a printer that wasn't purchased from a vendor like Tiny Machines that uploads the bootloader for you. This is a one-time thing. And what you're going to need is the actual Uno and five female to female jumper wires and then one male to female jumper wire. Now, I have these connected to my Uno already and I'm going to disconnect them right now. And I have my USB cable for the Uno. Now, you can do this with the printer board still in the printer. You don't have to disconnect any cables. So I'm just going to run through this really quick and show you. So we're going to switch over to my small camera here. And we've got the board in the LCD. So I'm going to show you right now. Um, and I'm going to actually upload uh, a test firmware to it. So, But you can see here this has my, uh, my actual firmware. And what you need to do before is move this jumper here over from VREG to USB. So I'm just going to move this over and you'll see the LCD will turn on. Now this should have firmware on it. There we go. Uh, the LCD might be too bright, but there you go. Firmware's on it. So this already has a bootloader, but I'm going to show you how to reflash it. Uh, it's the same steps to reflash it or not, but I'm just using this as like an example. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to disconnect the USB so I know my board works. And let me move my microphone out of the way a little here. And I'm going to take the Uno and I'm going to move the LCD out of the way just so you guys can see better. And we got the Uno here. This one is a Ziltec brand. Um, it does not matter what brand of Uno you have. They are all the same device. They all do the same thing. They all function the same way. As long as you have one that works, um, that's all you need. So what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to connect. So you got these two rows of pin headers here. And there's three rows, okay, of two. So you got six pins in total. I just realized my head is blocking this. I'm going to move my LCD cable out of the way just so you guys can see the pins better so you're literally going to connect one to one across okay so I'm gonna connect this one here and this one here now there are diagrams on what pins go to what I won't bore you with the technical details but you're gonna connect one to one so I'm just going one to one here with these boards oriented like this if this was in your control box this would be the edge facing the wall of the control box and you're gonna connect five cables one to one meaning the pins are the same. You can see here, they're in the same location. Okay, so I'm still, I got three left open over here. I got three left open over here. And I'm going to do the same thing. And where it gets different is on the last pin. And I will show you what to do with that in a second here. Now, the last pin that is open is the reset pin. And the reset pin, you see here, the reset pin on the Uno is open and the reset pin on the CR10 board is open. Now, you're going to connect the male end to the Uno and the female end to the CR10. So I'm going to go from the CR10's reset pin, which is this one here down in the corner, and I'm going to go to the 10 pin on the Uno. And you can see here they're labeled here so I'm gonna go and put this into the 10 pin and then that's connected so these are all the connections you need to make between the Uno board and your CR10 board and what you're gonna do now is connect your CR your your Uno that's connected to the CR10 you're gonna connect this via USB so I'm gonna plug that in and this is gonna go into my computer And uh, apparently the port I'm plugged into doesn't have enough resources, so let me try a different one here. Dang USB hubs. Alright, so hopefully this will work. Um, if it doesn't, it's because my... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? If it doesn't, it's because my USB controller is being stupid. And I might have to move to a different port. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up our, the Arduino here. I'm going to see if it shows up here. Port, yeah, it's not showing up. So let me move this to a different port real quick. I'm just moving this to a different port on my computer because I got a million USB devices on this thing. So now when I go here, there we go. So we got Arduino slash Genuino Uno. So I'm going to go ahead and go to File, Examples, Arduino ISP, which is 11, it says in front of it, and then Arduino ISP. So I'm going to open that up, and that's going to open this sketch up. And what you're going to want to do is go from the drop down here, select your, go to board, select Arduino slash Gen, Genuino. I'm probably butchering how that's pronounced. And then select the port that your Uno is on, which will be COM12. And then you're going to hit the upload button. And what this is going to do is you're going to see the lights start flashing. It's compiling. And the lights will start flashing on the Uno once it starts uploading. So it just uploaded the sketch to the board. And now it says, nope, oh, where did it go? Now it says done uploading at the bottom. So now the Arduino is set up to program a device. So what you're going to do then is go back to your Arduino here. And then you're going to go to sketch, or sorry, board, Sanguino. Select the processor. You want the AT Mega 1284 or AT Mega 1284P 16 megahertz. For the port, you're going to select the COM12 Arduino Genuino. And then you're going to hit burn bootloader. And I'm going to switch back here so you can see what happens. So I'm hitting burn bootloader right now. Let me make sure you can see the LEDs. And it's burning the bootloader to the board. That's it. The bootloader's on. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to disconnect the Uno and disconnect my jumper wires. And I'm going to hook my LCD back up. And there should not be any firmware on this board. Um, it should give me a black screen sometimes. Um, but like I said, this board already had bootloader on it. But you can see there's nothing coming up on the screen. It's just blue. And that's good. That means that the bootloader took. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to go back over to my Arduino and make sure I see my port for the CR10 board. And here it is on COM7. COM1 is just something on my uh, computer itself. Uh, I think it's an Intel management controller. But I'm going to go and open up my Marlin, which you can get from my website at TH3D Studio. Um, this is the 114 release, so I'm just on my other screen right now, just browsing through my files here to go to my stock board firmware. And I'm just going to load the, Mar uh, the Marlin.ino file. You'll see it if, if it's installed. You'll see this little Arduino green slash white icon. You're going to load that up. So it's loading up. And then there are two ways you can flash the firmware. So you can flash it through here. And to flash it through the Arduino IDE, you can select Sanguino for your board. The same processor I mentioned earlier, the 16 megahertz, 18 mega, 1284p. And then for the COM port, you want to select your CR10 board. Now, the easier way to do this is through the binaries, which I have here. So when you extract my file, you'll see a firmware loader folder. And you'll see this AVR Dude SS program here. And you're going to want to select Arduino from the programmer, select the COM port your, your printer board's on, which in my case it's 7. This will be different on your computer. And you're entering a baud rate of 115200. And then to make sure it's actually communicating, go ahead and hit detect. And it should detect the CPU. So here it shows 18 mega 12 A4P. So it's communicating with our board. Now I'm going to go ahead and browse. And I'm already in the binaries folder. So when you download the file, you'll see the binaries. And then there will be a bunch of different versions if you're downloading the Easy ABL one. If you're just using the free one, you'll only see the stock here. So I'm just going to use the stock. You're going to go in here. You want to select marlin.ino.singlyuno.hex. And then hit go. So what's going to happen is it's going to program the board. You're going to see it's going to go writing. It's probably going to take about 30 seconds. And then it's going to do a verify on that. 
So if this step doesn't complete properly, you will not have your firmware. But I'm going to switch back to the small camera here, and you can see there is still no, um, still nothing on screen. So it's it's programming the the firmware on here right now. So now it's reading it to verify it, and then the board's going to restart, and you're going to see uh, the the TH3D logo come up if you're using my firmware when it starts up. So it's almost done reading. It's at about 80%. And then you'll see the, uh, the LCD kick on. Hopefully you can see it. It's having a hard time focus. So there we go. See the TH3D logo. And then your, um, your ready screen here. Like I said, it's kind of hard to see. There you go. And that's it. You will only ever have to update the bootloader and connect your Uno on a new board. As long as you don't screw up a flash, meaning you know, you're flashing the firmware, you unplug it halfway through, that could corrupt the bootloader and the firmware. Um, in that case, break your Uno out, follow the same directions. Uh, like I said, this board actually had the bootloader back already on it, but you can reburn the bootloader. There's, there's no harmful effects from doing that. So I hope this video helped everybody out. I know it's not the most beautiful video, um, but I, I don't know if you can see the mess behind me, but I just we just got done doing the last batch of uh, kits, and I just wanted to get this video out. So hopefully this helps somebody out. Um, I am actually not going to be releasing the USB ASPs that I talked about. I have a few of them here because the plug for the 6-pin actually does not fit on the header on the board, and the only way to get it to fit is either cut down the connector or bend the pin slightly, and I don't want people dealing with that. So my personal recommendation is, either way, get an Uno, because after you're done with it, you can play with it and do all sorts of cool things with it. I actually have one running right now that is serving as a network-connected garage door opener. So anyways, thanks for watching, and let me know if you guys have any questions. And I hope this was helpful for everybody.